Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. My life is a movie, bull riding in boobies. Yeah, James. I've been singing that song all weekend. I know. The Old Town Road remix with old B. Ray Cyrus. Oh. Uh, look, I know I talked about it on the last show, but it has captivated the heart of the uh, world. The world, you the, think? Co- the collective heart of the world, mm, yes. Because mm, I feel mm. that we all beat as one. You know, and I feel like it is, it is captivated. You always say that. The, the <laughs> you do, you always say that, right? I, I hate when, when people say our hearts beat is one, like that's not or true. Or anything. It's to not do, true. You hate anything to true. do with like the world being one, anything. No. You're like, I, look, we're all different. We're all separate. It's just. Don't it's not, get on my heartbeat. It's not that. I, if we all have different beliefs and all that other shit. And like, I, I don't want to believe in certain peoples and all of that other shit. Like, I don't, don't, you can't even get me started on that today, James. <laughs> Whoa. For reals. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, fuck what it, they just started letting what women drive in Iran, I think for the first time ever. Like, but that was the one thing that you were cool with. Yeah. I that was the one thing where you were you like, know, ah, maybe our hearts do beat as one. You thought, right? Yeah. Yeah, all those fucking people. I just, you know, I, I, you know, it's weird. I had this discussion with somebody over the weekend about this. Okay. Um, because I was like, hey, what was your? It was a military buddy of mine. I was like, what's your collective take on all this? Now that you've been out for a long time, and sure, he fought in Iraq and all that shit. And like, I, he told me this off the record, so I'm not gonna say his name. But he goes, uh, look, off the record, he goes, Iraq, they needed a fucking dictator. They really did. They needed sure. a Saddam Hussein. He goes, what you don't realize is how fucking crazy those people are over there anyways. You need somebody who's a goddamn tyrant ruling that country, and we took that away from them. And right. he's like, now it's just, he goes, go over there. It's fucking lawlessness and chaos. Like goes, They need a daddy. Yes, they need someone. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I've never, I've never heard from that perspective. And I was like, shit, all right. And he goes, look, I hate to say this. But dictatorships work in certain parts of the world. And I was like, okay. Right. Okay. So that's why I I don't, I don't subscribe to our hearts beat as one, you know, in the world. Like I just don't, people are different and you know, it depends on how you're raised and all that other shit uh, to, to believe in and everything else where it's just like, man, I, some people are just raised to, to believe in, in some kind of strong hatred that's, you know, right. carries over the rest of their life and, and that f- it's fucked. So, no, I don't believe all people are created equal, you know? Right. <laughs> supermodels say- are a prime example, James. Sure. Come on. Exactly. They're super. Exactly. They're super. Exactly. You know? It's like Aunt Becky's kid. She didn't need college. I don't even think she wanted to go to college. Have you seen how hot she is on Instagram? She was fine. A million and a half subscribers. She was fine. Aunt Becky's kid was fine. But dumb, that's not dumb. fair. That's not fair that you, your mom gets to be Aunt Becky and you get to be hot mm-hmm. and have a fuck ton of Instagram followers that you can monetize. Like, that's not fair at all. Right. So, you know. The world's not fair, Javes. All to say uh, that uh, that song has captivated. Yeah. The world. <laughs> the world it has. It's number one in the world, by the way. Okay. So it is, wait, not only is it number one in the world, the remix, because I checked it. iTunes has a, uh, they've got a, uh, a U.S. chart and a global chart now. Okay. Both U.S. and global. One and two. One and two. Number one is the Billy Ray, Ray Cyrus remix mm-hmm. for Old Town Road. Number two is just Lil Nas X, his, his original his song. His original version. Yeah. Is that people crazy? accidentally press on one. Is that which is cr- why well, I think they want to hear the difference. I know yeah, I did. For sure. Um, and then the Billboard charts said that they would revisit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. They're not going to do it, but they, w- they will revisit. I found it weird because we watched the American, uh, the ASAMs last night, the American Country Music Awards. Um, and it was good. Uh, look, it was a pretty decent show. They yeah. go more for like 
music and less like pageantry and shit. Like, you know. Yeah, it's just like. It's pretty quick. It's act after act. After yeah, like, they've got a good pacing to that show where yeah. you're just like, all right, awesome. You might not enjoy the artist, but the pacing of the show is is very timely where you're like, all right, great. This is clipping along here. And I find it odd that they didn't mention this song or them one single time when this is the biggest story there is right now. Even as like a joke at the front yeah. or something, they really didn't even acknowledge went it. silent on it. Didn't even acknowledge it, Yeah, which is crazy. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Whether or not Billboard is going to recognize that as country or not, it doesn't really matter. It's number one. The kid got signed exactly. to Columbia, by the way. And for a mega deal, the weird thing about it, so I, I did some research over the weekend because I was, I was like, man, there's got to be more to this story that we don't know. And obviously they're, they're digging now where it's just like, what the fuck has become this phenomenon? Like rare things happen like this. And we've talked about this in the past where it's like, this feels like the Gangnam style for this year. Every year there's like one song where you're just like, all right, cool. Yeah. Uh, this, this is probably it for this year. I mean, you're heading into summer too. Like, um, everybody's listening to this song and doing it. Like, it's it's crazy. Uh, uh, after digging on this this uh, this Artist, song, yeah. yeah, for a little bit, like digging into it, um, found out that he bought the song for thirty dollars from uh, the beat. The beat. Okay, that was it. Because there's there's a bunch of sites where you can buy beats and all that stuff. I do it for all of my you know songs that we make comedically and all that shit. Sure. And um, uh, man, I want to think, I think that I, I want to say that I've, be, I've paid even cheaper. I think I paid, I think I paid like oh. 20 bucks at some point. Yeah. I think you paid 20. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. So he got, he, he got this, but the guy, um, uh, it's some kind of the little Nas X is some kind of like algorithm master. And like, he figured out like, Hey, if, I, if I'm a black guy doing like country rap, like I think this could pop and. He was essentially trying to cross over something and then get all these people involved. He was the one who shouted out Billy Ray Cyrus on Twitter. Obviously. Yeah, and he. But how did he even have enough followers to get the attention? I, I guess he was doing shit before. Okay, um, but he's 19 years old, and I look. I say good on him. However, you make money in this life is listen really fucking hard, and uh, I don't care at all. I don't give a shit at all. Now this kid's got to make a full country album. Um, which which will be interesting, but like I was telling you last night, if if it's Colombian and they backed up the truck and gave him a bunch of money for this, he's gonna have the best producers on the planet, the best writers. He could have a fucking hit album, absolutely. Look, I mean, he seems smart enough absolutely. already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he's got some other stuff under his sleeve, like let's see it. Yeah. Why not? So. You know. You know what I'm wondering is when you're gonna stop singing it. Me. Never. Never. Oh. No, never, never. That's going to be the summer anthem. No, James. never, never. <laughs> it's going to be the summer anthem. No, never, never. Um, Gosh, I need that pool to open. Go ahead. So so I, for the audience, a lot of the times we write like bullet points for the show and things that we're going to talk about. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we actually do take this seriously, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. And try and talk. For I didn't an give hour. you anything today. No. On purpose. Why? There was a story I read last night that I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Is it a surprise for me? It's a surprise for me that I, I kind of believe now, maybe. It involves aliens and Area 51. No, wait, wait, wait. This is to your advantage. Okay. Advantage, Miss Jobless. Um, that's, that was my best, like, Wimbledon, you know. Oh, okay. Like 40 40, you know, break. Like, oh, advantage, Miss Jobless. Maybe it's French, French Open. We'll go French on that, that accent. They're saying this woman wrote a book, uh, Annie Jacobson. I'll, I'll, I'll give her a shout out. Um, she wrote about the, the Roswell incident in Area 51, the disc okay. crashing in Roswell. Mm -hmm. She's saying. Um, that the incident was actually linked to Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin mm -hmm. in an attempt to cause disarray in the United States by sending this uh, kind of you know spherical 
rando rocket type spe- sphere. No, I mean, it, it. look, they've got pictures of it, right? Mm-hmm. Of what this looks like or, or what this is. So it is a saucer. It looks like a saucer. Um, so he just basically lobbed a Frisbee over to us? Sort of. Uh-huh. I mean, th- I mean, this is this was her belief, right? This flying disc, um, you know, in 1947. And uh, ah, this is the first time that I've heard this theory. Um, but examining everything that's going on now and everything we've talked about on this show recently in the last few months with Russia, right? Mm-hmm. This, to me, would make full sense rather than, you know, I, I, like, I'm not going to just dismiss this one and be like, oh, no, it has to be aliens. I've said it's aliens all along, and it was. And, like, look, I talked to the guy and all that other shit, but could you be fooled by something like this? Yes, you could. You could, yeah. Well, not I, mean, I couldn't. You couldn't. Um, but you could, and you have been for years. But if you think about it, at the time uh, of this, uh, yeah, exactly, James, you fuck. You fucker. At the time that this was going on, you know, America and Russia were in a space race. Sure. Like Sputnik and all that other shit and uh, (laughs) trying to get up there. So, like, if you were, like, truly trying to create chaos in the United States, what Mm -hmm. better way to do it than the fake of fucking alien crash? Like, you know. It's almost more unbelievable that that would work for this many years. Well, Well, think about it. Like, with the election. Right? Everybody was, I, I, yeah, it seems like it, or allegedly fooled by, oh, man, all these news articles that, yeah. that, that Russia was planting about things. I, when I read most of these headlines during that election, I, I just didn't believe them. I was just like, this, this doesn't make any sense. Like, right. This isn't. It's just these articles aren't true. This seems like this is coming from someplace else. When I saw these trending you know, topics on Twitter that just popped up out of nowhere, I was like, This does not make any sense. I do not believe this. I don't think this is real or true. Right, right. So if you're fooled by that, why wouldn't you be fooled? You know, I'm going to take this back to Michael J. Fox and back to the future, you know. Uh Uh-huh. Fucking DeLorean crashes through the barn and that family comes out and they're like, oh, my God, we've never seen anything like this. Right. Yeah, if you've never seen anything like this, what's your explanation for it? So. I will put, I will put a little. And how does this gal know? She just has a theory. She claims that she's been studying it for years and years and years. Okay. Uh, it's called Area Fifty One: An Uncensored History of uh, America's Top Secret Military Base and and how they got there and all this other shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. There. I mean, look. They've got photos of the aircraft. They said it was designed uh, by the Horton Brothers of Germany in 1945. Uh, the United States Army Counterintelligence Corps went on an extensive manhunt for the brothers following the 47 crash in hopes of find, you know, finding this flying disc. So, I mean, she's got some pictures here of, of Area 51 um, in this book, mm-hmm. like from the olden days of, of what it was, what it looked like and why and all this stuff. it's it's tough like what are you saying that there's no way that no aliens have landed here no i'm not but i'm saying this is also a possibility okay where i was dead set on it had to be yes because Mm. of those interviews i conducted and all that other shit sure we posted them on the show sure from what 10 years ago or whatever Mm. it was 12 years ago now i'm saying I could, I, I could, I could buy into to that. Right. I could buy into part of that. I'm curious what the audience thinks on that, but I could buy into rush, 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 rush sending something over. Yeah. So you, yeah, I mean, definitely you could, right? I think more than an alien. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, if you would have asked me though. In a million years, would I ever change my mind on that? Probably not. And then I got deep into this last night, and I was like, well... That made a little bit more sense to you, right? There yeah. was more of a tangible explanation. Well, there's a lot of things going on right now that have led me to believe that there is, you know, 
more shit out there that is happening that we don't know about and, you know, and why and what, for, you know, for whatever reasons they're happening. Uh, did you hear about this, this Chinese lady who got arrested at Mar-a-Lago? No. She had a bunch of malware on her and like some other shit. They can't figure out why she was there, how she got in. Um, and she got past like several levers, uh, levels of security there. Uh, but she was carrying this malware device. Uh, so uh-huh. it, it's the whole thing's a mystery. They've taken her. She's, you know, we don't know anything about this woman, but uh, she was there and, and had almost gotten through into this event that Trump was Gosh, at. Gosh, if I was going to send someone in, it would be, now was she older? I, I believe so, yes. Yeah, I would send an older Asian lady. Maybe a little nail kit. Yeah. Gosh, they could get so far in there before people are like, hang on a minute. Super unintimidating. Oh, just here to do nail. Yeah. Right? I'm just here to do nail. And you, oh, oh, and you just, you'd send, you just send her through. Right? Yeah. Great idea. Great so, idea. So she got scooped up by the, by, by the FBI, the Secret sure. Service and all that shit. Sure. Whisk away. No, no, whisked. Whisked it. Whisked. Whisketed. Whisked. Again. Whisked. On enough DayQuil to, to possibly fly at this point. Do we take a little something else or just the NyQuil? Uh, maybe a Benny. I might have thrown a Benny in the jet sure. there. A, you know, a Benadryl. I'm definitely seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, because my sweet, sweet voice just isn't in top, top quality. Uh, my mind's not working properly. So <laughs> it is what it is. I'm here for the people. I'm not. Right. I'm you're not, not going gonna, nowhere. You're not going to go. I'm not going not gonna, nowhere, Shapes. You're not going to lay in bed. But uh, you take what's been happening at these embassies also, right? Yeah. Um, in Cuba and then uh, China with the, the sound. Have you heard about these? Where this, uh, this sound has been going off and causing people to vomit and throw up and lose their hearing and all this <gasps> other shit. Like, uh, and they had to shut down. They evacuated the American. They're doing it on purpose or? Yes. And so there is this type. Oh, this will freak you out. Are you just, yeah, you're just going to kick back and throw some, some lipstick on. Let's get into some, tell me some more. conspiracies. Yeah. Tell me more about these Chinese fucking. Uh, they, they don't know who it is. So, cause mm. it happened in Cuba, mm-hmm. but at, at the uh, American embassies. So it happened in Cuba and it happened in China and it's this. Uh, all of the the uh, like our diplomats or whatever just reported like v- vomiting at the same time, like they they lost their hearing, and it was some type of sound. You, are you not buying any of this no, at all? I think, I'm this sorry. is real. No, no, I'm sorry. Just the visual of it is really funny to me. That's horrible, James. Look, you are a person who is. That's horrible, but the visual of just like a sound making everyone puke at the same time. No? No. You you've been on a plane. You know what happens when it's, you know. Right. I'm going to I'm going to I'm just saying you're just sitting there and you hear a noise and all of you guys just puke, you know? You're like, "Uh, oh. you're going to make me bring this up." No, I'm just I'm saying the visual. I'm just getting the visual. That's all. I'm all not right. So, and again, this is New York Times. This isn't like eight shit.com. I know that's that's one of your faves, but sometimes like, we believe eight shit over New York Times, though. Let's be real. It's true. But it's go true. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so they're, 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 this the first one happened in Cuba, and it's called a sonic attack. Um, yeah. And let's see. The the symptoms range from headaches, nausea, hearing loss. Uh, two dozen of them um, eventually revealed signs of concussions or other brain injuries. Oh my god! Yeah, and and the speculation about the cause uh, turned to weapons and a blast sound or microwaves. Um, so Ooh. this has happened in two different countries now at this point, and uh, wow, Jeez. man! Jesse and Ross look at the internet for real, though. Like, I mean, you know. There, again, because there's a lot of debate in the medical community of what this is and why and, and how to do it. But um, somebody, because I, I, we talked about this on Drinking Bros when it happened. Because this was the first one was last year. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of people wrote in. They were like, yeah, man, the, the government's I been testing this that. for years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So, you know, if, if they're doing shit like that, 
planning a fucking saucer and everything else. Like, you know, I, I remember when those JFK files got released by Trump um, and they released, you know, they started slow releasing those. I, I read some of those. And one of the big things was uh, creating some bombs that went off in Florida to make it look like they were uh, Cubans, um, you know, because they were, yeah, they were yeah, the communist yeah. country and all that shit. And it was it was in the time when JFK was in office and the Bay of Pigs and all that stuff. And like the government was going to plan it in like four separate places, or, um, these bombs across the state to make it seem like a heightened interest for America that, you know we should be at war with Cuba or, you know, really stress that there's communisms at your front door and all this other shit. So it's not that surprising. Um, I think in today's world, it would surprise me because with Trump being in there, it sort of, it sort of makes the government seem less complicated or that, that it would be, you know, able to, to, to do shit like this. Mm -hmm. Because there's a war between, you know, Trump, the FBI, and the CIA, and all this other shit. And it's like, would you be able to get away with any of this today? Or, you know? Because if not, let's face it. They probably would have had Trump, you know, off to this point. Yeah. Like, uh, just for, for their pure hatred of him, you know? Right. Like, because I, I still believe that JFK was killed by the government, you know? Um, no, I believe he was killed by some gangsters. Really? Mm -hmm. That had nothing to do with the government whatsoever? No, he was starting to do, like, be involved in these, um, bills and legislations and cracking down on, um, uh, the, uh, Italian mob. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And well, I his brother think they was, said, yeah. Right, but I think they said, no, sir. Mm. Nah, I could, I could be, I, I, can, I can go along with that for sure. The government doing it, you know how I, you know how I feel about the conspiracy theory. You just don't buy into any of these at all whatsoever. I just, it's easier for me to, to live, live my life <laughs> mentally, physically, you know, emotionally. Sure. If I just believe that the government has my best interests in mind, oh. they're always they're always on the up and up. And only the bad guys do bad things, right? <laughs> that helps me. Yeah, I bet. Um, to just... Because as, as we've said and as I've told you before, if I was stupid, I'm not super smart, but if I was dumb, I would be so much happier, right? Right. And we've talked about this before. So in certain things, I just have to shut it off. Okay. I have to shut down the intelligence. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Dumb myself down, if you will, in certain situations so that I can just carry on. Because I really have so much other, so many other things. Sure. That I need to dedicate brain space to. Right. Um, that anything like that, any rabbit hole, anything like that is just not going to really work for me. Okay. You know, that the government would kill its own president so not one i can't get one conspiracy theory out of you that you believe in no <laughs> probably not why don't you try what are your big what are your ones that you like you the jfk you think the government did it yes moon landing you're still on the fence or you're not sure no no, no. that one I, I think that one's real that one is real that one's real uh what's another one uh the sound thing i think is real yeah I mean, uh, this. I, I think it's this just is a matter real. of like who's doing it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it I, is obviously real. And it's now, just a after of, after reading this, like I don't, I'm not a flat earther. I guess that's not a okay, not a real thing. This saucer thing from Russia, I can get, I can get behind that. Okay, I could possibly get behind that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Bush being behind the 9/11 attacks. Did no, you ever go down there? Can't get okay. behind that. Me neither. He's not smart enough. Well, he's not, but maybe he's dumb enough so that other people can, under his nose, do things. But I don't see it. I don't see it with him. So I, I can't get behind that one either. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I, you know. What else is there? It's just too. Martin Luther King ki killed by the government, I believe. I mean that, and really this is how you. This what about is... that? What about that one? You think the what? Sorry? Martin Luther King was killed by the government? Uh, no. Really? Why would he be? What was he doing that was going to threaten uh, so, you know, civil rights and, and everything that was going on at the time? Like, mm. 
You know, my father interviewed him in prison, James Earl Ray. Yeah, what did he say? He said... He said someone he was, hired him? Correct. Um, he said that he was innocent and that, you know, he was the fall guy for this. And then the King family... Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this. I was young. You might be super young because you're a beautiful lady who's way younger than me. Super young. Obviously, um, you guys know that. No, but uh, so my father interviewed him in prison and he said he was innocent. Um, the King family later came out and said, hey, we think he's innocent too. Let's, let's have a retrial. And they did it on like Fox or something. Okay. Do you remember this? No. They did a whole thing on, on Fox and they had a jury and all this shit and they retried the case and everything else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they came back with the same conclusion and the King family did it on their own just cause they wanted an answer to it. Right. So, you know, you'll never know. He ended up dying in jail, but yeah. But you know, th- once you're in jail like that too, it's, you know, and if you did do it, what? I don't know what your I don't know what his credibility is. I don't know what his life was before that. I don't either. You know? Yeah. Um so with that it's I'm I would say no. I would say it was it's someone like what's happening now with all the crazy po- protests. I actually, you know what? I have, I still have the letters. Yeah. I still have the letters from James Earl Ray from prison to my dad. Um That's pretty cool. Maybe we'll bring those out and read those on the show one day because those are rad. But yeah, yeah, I think they were mostly involving the case and whether like the, the proper time to come in and out and do all that other stuff. But uh, yeah, strange. Like um, how protests and all of this is getting now. So he did so crazy. I'm surprised that, you know, that hasn't happened. These people get so angry about it, and there were people that were so angry at him for doing what he was doing, right? Martin Luther King? Yeah. Yeah. So I more believe that someone would just be like, fuck this shit, you know? Sure. These blacks don't deserve shit. This is getting out of hand, right? I more believe that someone would just snap than the government doing it. And maybe that's just me. Well, if you have one guy creating that much chaos, right? I think the government looks at it. I mean, look, there, there's been files out, you know, for obviously John Lennon. Everybody remembers those. Like, you know, the FBI was investigating him for a while. And I think, I think he even got deported. Do you remember that whole situation? Who got deported? Uh, John Lennon. The whole give peace a chance oh, yeah, and the yeah, protests yeah, yeah, and all that yeah, other yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, if you're, if you're digging into John Lennon, for Christ's sakes, it wouldn't surprise me with Martin Luther King at all. I guess at, at that all. time, maybe, maybe, but I can't really, I can't go down those roads, like I said. Because your tiny mind couldn't handle it? Is that what, <laughs> because it, is my that what you're tiny saying? Mind, yeah, because my tiny mind doesn't have enough room to, and again, I was saying, so this is how you turn into Alyssa Milano and stuff like this, is when you allow yourself, yeah. you allow yourself to have the kids play in another room or whatever. And you go down this rabbit hole of all these things and what you need to do and how you can change it and gathering people and getting people together and rising up against the fucking environment and the and then this and the, this happened. You just, there's so many different fucked up things that are happening, right? She's like, me too, environment, green deal. It's like, they're so all over the place. Yeah. So... That's how you, so the way that you prevent yourself from turning into Alyssa Milano or these people that are just spinning out on Twitter, you just go, man, like I, you know, I'm just going to have to either find one cause, I'm going to find one thing that if this happened, I'd get fired up about it. But other than that, I've just got to take care of my family. Don't fuck over my friends and just, you know, carry on. Try and just do the... It's like with anything. We, w- we just want to create the best content, right? Yeah. You got to head down, just do that. You know, I want to make my boys the, you know, kindest, awesome, most strong dudes ever, right? You just focus on things that matter. Right. And really, like, Trump will be out of office at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it's interesting you brought up the Alyssa Milano thing, right? 
Because I, I think in what points do you admit to yourself what's causing all of this fucking shit? Um, we've railed on Ch- Chelsea Handler for a, a, a while. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. Um, we have. For her, cra- yeah, for for her, her craziness and all this other for shit. Right. She actually came out yesterday and said, yes. Like, uh, she said, I'm going to read this to you because I read this article yesterday okay. and I was just like, holy shit. Chelsea Handler said the Trump election drove her to a therapist and she had a midlife identity crisis over it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said that she was so emotionally unhinged after President Trump's election that she had to enter therapy. She, she, was, on, she, she was on Bill Moore uh, Friday night. Okay. By the way, if you haven't listened to the Tiana Trump interview, if you're one of the few who haven't listened to that a few days back about Bill Moore, do yourself a favor and rewind to that one highest episode of all time jesus christ she'll go into a great bill maher story um that she realized during the the therapy that mr trump's uh victory against hillary clinton dredged up old emotions stemming from the death of her brother Mm -hmm. like that she had a lot of anger and um and she said this is her quote so i'm gonna just read her quote so i'm not misquoting her here I had to pay a psychiatrist to listen to me bitch about Donald Trump for about the first three weeks. And once I got past that to the real stuff, I realized the parallel was there. Uh, My world becoming unhinged when I was a little girl and my brother dying at nine years old. And, uh, you know, I never related to the two. But for me, I can imagine it must have been for so many other people that, you know, Mm -hmm. It was this trigger, this huge emotional trigger of everything being destabilized. And I realized how spoiled and privileged I had been my entire life to be, to realize, to be upset on this, you know, on a 10 is what she called it. Mm -hmm. I like that phrase Uh, every day and the outrage and anger. I just wanted to fucking fight people. And I was like, you know what? I got to go see a a, a therapist, a a, a psychiatrist. I I appreciate it. So with that, you know, I think. I think if Alyssa Milano or like Deborah Messing and all of them stepped back and said, hey, man, what's really causing this anger? Like, it's not the president. It really isn't the fucking president. You've got your own shit going on, you know? You have your own shit going on. And that's always the answer. And a lot of times, I mean, I don't know about Alyssa Milano. She has a husband and kids. Yeah. Cut it out, dude. (laughs) So which uh, Chelsea Handler, Whitney... Things like this. They're older ladies that have not been married and don't have kids. And the only thing I can say about that is like, don't have kids. You don't have kids. You can't have kids. Yeah. Absolutely. But what kind of happened to me when I did have kids is it was very freeing and liberating that I didn't have to worry about whether I was happy or not. Right? Whether I was you know, my potential was being filled, whether I was fulfilled in my life. Yeah. Whether my identity is, all of that goes away and it goes on something else. Whether it's, you know, kids, a husband, a dog, a new business, whatever. You really need to, it, it was freeing for me because I didn't have to worry about whether I was okay or okay with something or happy that day or fulfilled. I was worried about the kids being happy that day, being fulfilled, reaching their potential, right? Right. Following their dreams. Right, right, right. Not mine, right? So it's just so, again, I don't know Alyssa Milana's problem. I know when they get older, sort of Bette Midler style, where the kids are out or something and they they don't have a lot going on. Sure. And they really need to send you vaccination, you know, Facebook messages and stuff like this. Because they just don't have anything else going on. They need to, you know, spin out on stuff. But really, unmarried, childless, older ladies is a scary group. Because they have a lot of pent up something that they need to put onto another human and it's not happening. And I don't think it's just for women only either. Like, I think, you know... For me, having kids, it was the same way too, where you're right. It, it was finally something that I was just like, all right, I, I, I have to be, I don't care about myself anymore. You don't care I don't about give a shit. Like, I am, you know. Can you remember now? I mean, how exhausting it is to be like, 
wake up every day and be like, am I happy? You know? Yeah. What am I, what, what kind of potential am I going to, you know, put out into the world yeah, yeah, yeah. today? Am I going to get what I'm worth? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right? I deserve more than this. All that shit. That if you keep that going into your 40s, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. like it really gets exhausting and you, you will, you'll have a breakdown, you'll have a midlife crisis, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, unless it's, you move through it. Exactly. It's true. Therapy like, I, or you, you know, I, I think back to, you know, the, the, like being single and all that other stuff. And you're right. Like all you're worried about when you wake up all day long is your own selfishness of Yes. Do I feel happy? Is this going to make me feel good? Is this, you know, whatever this one thing is going on in my life or this, mm-hmm. you know, work wise or whatever. And it's like, all right, cool. I, Am like, I following my dreams? Yeah. And, and now, you know, after having kids, I can have a shitty day at work and I come home and it's like the kids are smiling and laughing and, and all of that stuff. And you're like, all right. Deep breath, like this is but this also, is what life is right. about, rather but also, than that. The shitty day at work is about them. Yeah, it's not. A, it's like I can go through the shit, right? It's just, is this going to somehow end up okay for them? So it really is all, no matter what it is, it's all on them, right? Right. The stress of your day is because of them. Yeah. Right. The good stuff is because of them, but it just eliminates that whole. You know, having to go to therapy about your broken home and realizing that it it takes all of that away. Like, I don't need to go to therapy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know what happened when I was younger. (laughs) And I really just don't. I I really just have another focus. Not that there's anything wrong with therapy either. Absolutely. No, no, no. But, um... Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been, I will go again, but it won't be about the president. I fucking... Yeah, exactly, exactly. You I just know, want to clarify that for the oh, audience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, look... Sorry, sorry. Uh, it, you guys know. No, I've been no, to no. therapy. We've been to therapy. Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, I tell you, it was not about a president, and it wasn't about some kind of political fracture. It was... You know, because there, like, there, look, and, and therapy can be great, and it, it depends on you're right. It's not, it usually it's not about, is. It's not about a president. And uh, the, the, over the weekend, Dwayne Wade um, is retiring from the NBA. Okay, uh, they did a special with him. He's married to the actress Gabrielle Union, mm-hmm. and uh, they did a sit down together. And uh, it was Rachel Nichols, who I love. She's just a. I, she's been with ESPN for years. She does great interviews. Like she'll just be blunt about everything. And she said, what are you going to do without being in the NBA? Cause I think he, he's played for 16 or 17 years at this point. What are you going to do? And how are you going to emotionally cope with that once you're not playing every day anymore? Mm-hmm. And he was sitting with his wife and he said, I'm going to go to therapy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to therapy right afterwards because I realize that this is going to be the biggest change in my life from having to, you know, from doing something every single day that I love to not doing it. And he goes, I want to be mentally prepared for that and everything else. And Rachel Nichols was like, man, that's, it's really brave of you to say that because no look, guy absolutely. would ever admit that and everything else. And, um, I know, look, I, I know Gabrielle union a little bit through the grapevine and, and she's always preached this, uh, wellness and, uh, for life and, and talking about yeah your feelings and everything else and that it makes you a better person and all that stuff and um he's the first athlete i can remember coming out and saying that hey yes this is going to be emotionally challenging and i i want to you know get a hold of it before it gets a hold of me because i've met a lot of athletes who and we've interviewed a lot on the sports show and all that other stuff and like you know, after they're out, they just don't know what to do with themselves. And it's just like, I did this and I was awesome at this and I was super famous for this. And now I'm not doing Mm -hmm. that anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, look, therapy can totally be helpful. Um, and I think, you know, every, you know, everyone, if you have something you want to move through should do it. I guess what I was saying is she bitched to her therapist about Trump for three weeks. And that, is where you go, what the fuck? Yeah. If you're not talking to your therapist about yourself, right? 
Jesus. <laughs> uh, and other top stories here. Um, look, man, they've been, we talked about this maybe two weeks ago. They've been testing out these cancer vaccines. Um, and they're, I, this is, this was CNBC this morning when, when I woke up and I was like, oh shit. So it's, again, this is not some like, this is not world star sure. that this came from, but they said it's shown promise, um, in 11 patients with, with lymphoma. So, so they're getting the vaccine after they already have it. Correct. So, so I mean, if you could, you know, the, the joke has always been, you know, can you cure cancer? Or, yeah. And you know, it's not like you're going to grow up to cure cancer. Mm -hmm. Man, if you could. Whew. Cyborgs. I don't know. I, man, I'll, since we're doing conspiracies and all that shit, like we'll, we'll go ahead and do it now. Just go ahead and make it a theme for the show. I don't know that the government necessarily wants that around or mm -hmm. any government around the world wants that. That's one thing I will get behind is the big pharma drug conspiracy yeah. stuff where um, not the government, but big, big pharma yeah, wants you to be sick. And ergo, they go through the doctors to do so. So they pay them for these drugs or whatever. And everybody is is in the um, on the teat. I don't know. Yeah. But um, that is one I will definitely, I will go down that road for sure. I've seen it. I've been a part of it. I've, you know. You've talked me out of it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, at the doctors. Yeah. And recently too. Um, yeah. With like blood thinners and whatever. Um. And cholesterol I, I, stuff, which now that is getting yes. like recalled and, you know, there's always the suit. So first it goes, the, everyone makes the money. So first it goes, the drug comes out, the doctors all prescribe it, you take it, get on it. Then they have a big lawsuit about right, it right. because they figured out all these side effects and people, enough people have these things happening to them that a lawyer gets involved, then they all, and it's this big circle of everyone making the money that they need to make. And, you know, for you example, you were like, I'm tired, whatever. Right. Yeah. I, and I, I, I just wasn't feeling myself. I, I was lethargic. I didn't have a bunch of energy or whatever. It right. It turned out to be shingles. And yeah, it ended up being shingles. That was something you could treat done two weeks done. What they want, you come in there, I'm feeling. It was a feeling, few months, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like downplay it. Sure. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah. But um, I'm not saying you like went to the doctor because you're like ill or something. No, but no, anyway, no. so you went for this thing. I'm just feeling weird. I'm like, have low energy. I'm not like this. You are someone that can sleep four hours and be like energetic more than yeah, the yeah. kids, right? Yeah. So it was just weird. You go into the doctor, you tell them you're feeling lethargic in this and this. They're wanting to put you on cholesterol medicine. Now, the side effects of this cholesterol medicine are weight gain, lethargy. Like, I mean, all the things that you've gone in. Sure. They're going to put you on it and you're going to go even further. They don't care. Right? They've ticked all the boxes that they think it could be. Let's just try all these. And then if you feel bad with these, we'll give you more to kind of counteract. So that's why most people that aren't you know, wellness minded in any way, or even like go to whole foods ever. They are on fit five to six. I mean, we know people in our family, five to six different, you know, medications. Yeah. Oh yeah. And one medication is going to fix the side effects of this medication. And then you go into the rabbit hole of that and they're spending hundreds upon thousands when None of that was the answer. So with you, I was like, don't get it. Do yeah, not I, get on that. I remember that. you looked at the, the, the chart and you were like, hey, you're only like four points over what you're supposed to be. You were like, this is totally normal. This isn't so, like disturbing levels where they're right, like, right, right. let's get you on this so you don't die. So it's I, like, I called me? the doctor and yeah. I said, hey, man, I was talking to my wife. Like, you know, she said, I really don't need to be on this type of medication or whatever. And then he, they, they backtracked. They were just like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it you know. It was for but preventative. But, but, yeah, exactly. Preventative or whatever you could, you know. But And I was like, hey, man, I, I don't want to take shit unnecessarily throughout my day be just just to do it. Like, um, 
And we, we got in a pretty strong argument about it. And he was just like, well, you know, again, preventative or whatever. Because if I, was, I wasn't there, you would have taken it. Yes. You would have gotten even more down the road of what you went in there to prevent. Right. right? And they don't care. No. Oh, all right. Well, we could give you this, uh, you know, Prozac or something, right? Yeah. People are depressed. They give them Prozac. Do you know the fucking side effects of Prozac? Weight gain. Low sex drive. These are the hu- the two biggest things that everyone, you just deal with it because you're like, fine. Right. And then when that doesn't work anymore because you're fat and you can't fucking get it up, then they'll give you another one to go on top of this. <laughs> and so that, uh, maybe it was my mom who was a, you know, natural homeopath, chiropractor, doctor since I was younger, but we've always been, and it used to embarrass me when I was younger that we would go to the doctor and she would question every single thing they wanted to do. And I'm like, mom, just let him blah, blah, blah. And it was stuff like I used to get ear infections and they wanted to like do this big surgery on me when I was a baby and put like this tube in. She was like, nah, man, like, uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to, we're, we're going to treat these ear infections. And when she gets older, if this is still an issue, right. That's great. I didn't, wasn't I, an issue, I actually right? didn't know the story about you. Yeah, wasn't an issue. I'm I'm fine. It's just, you know, some kids get ear infections or whatever, yeah. and it was this new sort of thing. I'm sure they don't do it anymore. But it was this new kind of thing they were doing, and it would just prevent, you, you know, open up something, whatever. Um, question that, didn't do it. I mean, everything. We took the dog to the vet. His eye was all gross, right? Took the dog to the vet. They wanted to take the eye out. My, my mom was like, that seems a little, can we just kind of maybe try medication first, whatever? She goes in there, opens the eye. It's just a little foxtail. You know those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She takes the foxtail. It's like a corner sticking out. Takes the foxtail out, clears up. Stuff like this in my life that I've seen where you go, oh, this is another thing of someone wanting to quick fist, get the medication, get the surgery. How many times, and way back in the day, how many times were things taken out, organs taken out, eyes taken out, whatever, because they didn't want to investigate more. They had so many patients, right? It's like the public defender's office. They have so many cases. It's like, send them, just send them, yeah. send them to jail, right? Innocent, who, are, who cares? And so that obviously is one that I will go down because I've seen it. I've experienced it with you, with myself in the past with, I mean, dogs, humans, everything. Um, I mean, even Prozac, like they wanted to put me on Prozac for a little, you know, like after Jack's, you get a little baby blues, baby blues. I didn't even have postpartum. So I would have yeah, like, gained that, yeah. weight and like, no, fuck. No, we and know people that, yeah. and been miserable. Yeah. Um, but you feel like they told me to take it, so I guess I'll just keep trying it. I got to try it for three months. Doesn't work until three months because then that's where you're hooked. Yeah. So they tell you you got to at least try it for three months because then you can't get off of it after that. Yeah. It's all kinds of shit that I will definitely go down that road. Anyways. Yeah, for a friend of mine, they put on Prozac after her sister died um, in college, and I got to call it like... I hadn't talked to her in maybe three years or whatever, right? And I just moved to Los Angeles and she called and she was like, man, I don't feel right on all these fucking meds and all this shit. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of described what she was going through or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, fuck man. Um, and then she, she was like the, the adamant one of like, it was this, like when she got off of it, Mm -hmm. she was like, it was fucking this that was making me crazy and this other shit and everything else. She was like, you know, the doctor had prescribed it, you know, cause I knew the sister and everything else. And I was just like, fuck man. Um, but you're right. Uh, it's weird because you don't know what to trust, you know, here and there where you're just like, all right, should I get this? Should I not get this? I think rule of thumb, you know, unless it's something to treat some kind of virus or disease, um, anything else that they give you blood pressure, you can fix that. You know, it's really hard work and you know, you can fix that cholesterol. You can fix it. It's your dad did, right? Yeah. Yeah. What? With, with uh, just eating healthy and. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they were going to put him on blood pressure, cholesterol, you know, even like weird, like AFib, stuff like this. And he went, 
he did Atkins, but he he got off of that and then started doing just all organic, natural stuff, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, because he looks totally great. Totally fine. And yeah. he's totally clean and everything. And I've, you know, watched enough of those damn documentaries of the juicing and the whole thing where that's the one thing I do believe that, like, maybe the organic shit is now big business and all of that crap. But really, if you're given a diagnosis of, you know, weird skin rashes or high cholesterol, and they're going to put you on all these medications that you're going to have to take one to interact the other, I would say always try like a cleanse, juicing, natural way first. Right. And if you really, really can't do it, and if your body is just for some reason, which I promise it probably won't, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, you know, then I guess think about it. But the doctors will never tell you. And with you, the the how low it was, they should have said, here's what I want you to do for a couple weeks. We're cutting out red meat. You're going to take oatmeal in the morning. You're going to do this and this. No cheese. Yeah. See how it goes. They would never, right? Because then that makes li- liable. They sent you home and told you to do something that wasn't prescribed and then you die, right? Or whatever. So all these liabilities and lawsuits and all these things force them to kind of just, oh, well, I bu- I gave him that. If he, you know, if he had a heart attack, it's like I gave him the, I prescribed him AFib or whatever. Did that make him fat and lazy? Sure. But he wasn't dying. Fuck. You won't get the malpractice. So, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I'm pretty adamant about. Yeah. And um, not in like a weird way. You're not weird about it. Like you're not a, no, like no, a crazy, just, like, hey, you always try to look at everything I'm just going to try the more natural way. Pragmatically, where it's just like, hey, all right, what's the problem here? How do we solve this? Is there another way rather than taking another way, yeah. Yeah. Only because I know know what they don't tell you, which is that hard road that you'll have to go down. And it better be real. You better be about to die of a heart attack before you take fucking, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Before you don't try something else first. Always. Shit. What do I know? What do you know, Jabes? Absolutely nothing. My tiny brain, I'm telling you, how did how did I even fit any of that in? <laughs> <laughs> you have a crime corner for us, Jabes? As I'm drinking. Crime corner, crime corner. <laughs> crime corner. Woo! This is a good one. And I... I just commend O'Shane oh, Goodman. Thanks, buddy. And I'm Wait, sorry to say. His name keeps popping up a lot. I- well, he sends me the best stuff and he he just keeps he keeps them coming. Ah. And I think he kind of gets what my vibe is, which is I don't want anyone to be raped or murdered and then talk about that, right? Right, right, right. Or like dismembered or stuff like this. <laughs> I kind of just want it to be a crime. A crime. A fun, like yeah. a fun, flirty crime. Sure, sure. Right? So Florida man freed from jail. Ah, Florida man again. Always. And you know why. Yeah. We all know why. The, sh- the sunshine law. Right? Where you can, in Florida only, is when you can make public pending like cases that aren't closed I did kind not of know thing. that actually yeah so the florida man thing is like sure florida but it's also every other state they won't until something's totally closed okay they won't give you any information about it all right anyway i know so, that's helpful I, I didn't know that i didn't know that existed it's more fun to think that florida is just a big trash pot which in some ways i think it is it no? is yeah I, I live there i live there for a year sure yeah. so Nobody questions that it all happens in Florida. No, no, no. That's at all. never like an issue. But Florida man freed from jail immediately breaks into cars in the parking lot of the jail. Ah, and okay. I commend the perseverance. He stayed on brand, anyways. Yeah, he stayed on brand. <laughs> you know. So after spending time in St. Lucie County Jail early Thursday following an arrest for grand theft. Uh huh. Is what he was arrested for. He was finally freed, Michael Casey Lewis. He was finally freed just after 9 a.m. 
So how did he enjoy his newfound freedom? I like how they write these. Things. Yeah. It's almost like they write them just for me. <laughs> so how did they, how did he enjoy his newfound freedom? <laughs> By attempting to break into more cars in the parking lot. So he's caught on jail surveillance. Going to each car, he got into oh, a couple cars God. for a couple minutes, got out. So when he was stopped by deputies, he handed over a bag full of items that he took, iPhone, $600 cash, cigarettes, debit card. So then he was arrested again, <laughs> this time for burg- burglary, grand theft, uh, and was booked into jail again. And then he was uh, freed after a few hours on bond again. Again. So he went out to the parking lot. I'm joking. So that was it. (laughs) Jesus Christ. And he did it again. No. That's crazy. Yeah. So then, and then he, for the last time he was released and then he left the premises. Oh, okay. All right. The last time. Yeah. But I mean, it took him like, hey, they're on to me. Right. Like, yeah, they're on to me. Gosh, you just. Man. You really, I mean, I mean, no consequences. You know None. what I mean? No, None. no conscience, no blatant disregard. Some what? people just like jail. They just love and maybe jail. Maybe that's what it was. It was like he was good in there. He was going to sleep. I think it's like Shawshank. Remember that scene in Shawshank where they're like, yep. look, a lot of people will come back just because all their friends are in there. Totally. They know everybody. They feel comfortable finally in the system. And then they get out and they're like, oh, fuck, what do I do with myself? So you think in that one day that he was there. He just made the best friends of his life. Maybe. <laughs> and he had Maybe. to go back. He found his soulmate in there. Maybe. There's, look, I've, there's some homeless people that straight up said, look, they were getting arrested just for, you know, warm meals and a place to stay and all that Oh, stuff. and those are the ones they'll just, like, send right out. And they're like, come on, man. And they're yeah. like, nope. No. Nope. Bye. No. Nope. Yeah. So it's possible. You know, one day he made some, long, you know, lasting friendships. Yep, he just had to get back in there. We've all been there, you know. You go on a field trip to D.C., you meet some kid from another school, and you're like, "Man, we could be beef fries." Let's let's be pen pals, you know. Really? Eh, you know, you're at the uh, the Smithsonian, sure, looking at dinosaur bones. And you guys just click, yeah, right? Just a lot of witty banter, and witty it's just banter. Like, yeah, we're gonna fun- be. Beef fries for life. Yeah, fun pranks. Yeah. Hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it. They probably just had the oh, the best time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was uh, just like take know. me back. Uh, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to take this away from him. Yeah. I'm not going to take this away from him, James. Mm. I'm not going to shit on his dreams like you're shitting on them right now. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to him. I wouldn't dare. I would never. Uh, that'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, James? We shall. I, I, this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to give this to Bruce Pearl, the coach of Auburn. Uh, the Final Four was oh, yes. over the weekend, obviously. Um, Auburn is not playing in the national championship tonight. We're taping this on a, on a Monday, so this airs on Tuesday nights. Uh, also, subscribe to the show on YouTube. That's a big deal for us this year. Sure. Um, there was a... This was one of the worst calls I've ever seen in oh, history. Right. Next oh, to that God. Saints call, yep. obviously with Sean Payton. Same um, kind of deal. It is. So not only did the referees miss a double dribble call with about, you know, five seconds left on the same team, but then Auburn got whistled for a foul, which technically was it a foul? Maybe. It, it's a hard one. I, I've watched replay a hundred times where it, it – the kid made contact with the other kid, but whether or not the shooter kind of jumped into him or whatever, I don't know. Either way, it was a turnaround three pointer at the buzzer in the corner. Like you're not making that fucking shot. Anyways, you don't blow the whistle on that. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm making Bruce Pearl, the uh, revolutionary figure of the day, unlike the saints coach who fucking went ballistic and and he has every right to and petition the, the NFL and all the shit to change the rules on looking at pass interference and all that stuff. Bruce Pearl, the coach of Auburn, literally just came out today and said, you know, on the missed double dribble call, get over it. I'm tired of hearing about it. Get over it. I've moved on. Oh. Everybody else should move on. The national championship okay. is tonight. And I was like, whoa, I don't think I've ever heard a coach. Like, I would have. Auburn's never been to the championship. I would right. have lost my fucking mind had that had happened to me. Right. Bruce Pearl did not. Like, he has handled this with dignity and grace and like i i would not have at all 
<laughs> we know you wouldn't have. Boy. <laughs> you would have burned the fucking place down. Yeah. I, I'm even watching it like, you know, again, I'm a non-Auburn fan. I, I felt bad for those kids. I was like, Jesus Christ. And he was going ballistic on the sidelines. But Sure. Well, that's what you need that. To come out and say, hey, man, get over it. We moved on. It was a great season, all that other stuff. Pretty cool. Um, his reputation is really shitty. So mm. I'm surprised it wasn't the other way around on this one. But uh, I'm going to say good on him because he didn't want to take away from anything in the national championship tonight. Now, if you are watching this national championship tonight, I, it's Virginia against Texas Tech, which is not sweet. It's not a sweet. And it's not the dream matchup everybody was hoping for. How about a five-year-old in our neighborhood pick Texas Tech to go all the way? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And somebody in, because again, I host this sports show on Drinking Bro Sports. One person picks Texas Tech in there. Because so they if, went there? Yeah. Yeah. If they win, they, they get the... The glory and the – it's a signed Christian Leitner jersey is what we're giving away for free. Nice. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, fuck. It, I don't know. I saw Texas Tech play. So I was at the Sweet 16 game. Um, That's right. And I saw – so I saw them play. and They were awful to watch in person. Sure. They, they had 22 points at halftime. The over-under for this game tonight is 118. To put that in perspective, that means Vegas thinks this is going to be a 60 to 58 game. I, we were scoring higher than that, I think, in eighth grade. Right. Um, the women's game last night, the women's championship, was super exciting uh, with Baylor and Notre oh, Dame. Oh, yeah. It was, that was 82 to 81. That's so that's what I'm 100, talking about, yeah. That was 163 points. This score right now, this what Vegas is predicting, is about 40 points lower for dudes. Congratulations, ladies. Like, you know, they're, you they're on the come up. They're on the come up, man. And I watched, you know, there was nothing else on last night. So I, I, had, I, I had the second half of that game on just because I wanted to see and talk about it on the sports show. And uh, right. I, I'm going to be honest, man. Women's basketball has really improved where it's just it's fast paced. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're draining threes and shit like it's a it's a different game now. So uh, good on them. Good on them. Uh, weird show, James, but I liked it. It was weird. Yeah. We don't talk about serious shit very often. But, but listen. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, what you tune in for? Sometimes you've got to. You tune it. It's a mixed bag. It is. It is a mixed bag <laughs> at this point. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Subscribe to Ross Patterson Revolution on YouTube now. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>